Pambiulab X1, well, where to start even? It's something really different. Why? What is so special about this printer? Well, look at this footage. It's at average speed. Not only does it print so damn fast, but this printing quality is also the best I have ever seen. This printer can print all materials. It has some insane features like vibration calibration, first layer scan, printing with 16 different colors. Oh boy. Let's not get ahead. Before we can investigate this printer, we need to get this out of the box. The good news is, there is basically nothing to assemble. But there is a bit disassembling that has to be done. To be exact, all those protected things that hold this printer safe for shipping have to be removed. Those are strongly connected to the printer with screws. In the manual it shows where those screws are located. And also on the printer are big red arrows to make spotting them really easy. When I got the AMS unit removed and the bed unlocked, I installed the screen and connected the AMS to the printer with one wire and potent tube. And it's time to start the printer. First I have to choose the language, connect the printer to the Wi-Fi, install the filament and then the AMS does its own thing. After all this, printer is ready and it's time to my really first print. In the printer memory there are a lot of different test prints, but I choose the Benji boat. Before this print started, the printer leveled the bed and did a lot of different calibrations. All this took around 5 to 8 minutes. Then the print started and it was weird to watch. I knew this printer will be fast, but seeing this my own eyes now, uh, it was like what the hell. With basic FTM printer, this Benchibot took usually around one and a half hours to print, but this one was ready after 17 minutes. This is a huge difference. And not only it was insanely fast, but this is also the best Benchibot I have ever printed. For the next couple of days I was just printing test prints and slicing some of my own models to get to know this printer. And actually everything is pretty simple. My channel logo on the Estonian flag is my really first multicolor print ever. I believe the best way to show you how to operate with this printer is to do one test print step by step, starting with slicing. The slicer that I'm using is Bamboo Studio, special slicer for this printer. But you can use third party slicer for example Cura or Simplify 3D if you are interested. When I open the slicer, first I like to add all my filaments that are currently loaded to my AMS, or will be. I have 4 spools in there so I have to add 3 more. Now I select material and color for every spool. When this is done, I import the model that I want to print. All different slicing settings are here on the left. Here are all the most common settings. Learning the advanced on gives you way more options. Let's say I have now correct printing settings and I wanna now add different colors to my model. It's really easy to do. First I click here, color painting. Now there are a lot of options. First I select what color I wanna add, then how I wanna add. Here are four options. The first one is brush, you can literally paint a different color on your model. Triangle painting. I won't explain this too long, but 3D models are made of different sizes and shaped triangles, like you see. So with this tool you can paint those triangles. Third, you can select the height when the different colors start. And the last one is the best. With this tool you can select the faces you wanna paint. Actually this is the only option that I have used so far. Now I have done with the painting. For this model I have to use supports, but I wanna use special material. I have already added this one, it's filament number 3. I just click to the support and number 3. Now the model is ready to slice. 
To get the cheat code to the printer, there are two options. One of them actually won't work yet because the moment when I'm recording the video, this printer and slicer are not publicly available. So I cannot log into my account in the slicer and send the file to my printer by Wi-Fi. But it will be an option. The second way is to use good old SD card. When the cheat code is in the printer, now select the model. Before you push print, you can select those things that the printer do before printing. I leave them all selected all the time. When the printer is changing the filament, it moves back there and extrudes the filament out of the nozzle into the hole. The other end of the hole is the back side of the printer. Here you should add some container to collect all those filament pieces. I didn't. When the printer has extruded new filament in, it wipes the nozzle and keeps printing. For me, there is nothing else to do to just wait. Meanwhile, I can show you Bamboo Lab app. This is pretty dope, by the way. Here you can monitor your print, you can see live temperatures and print camera. And also, this app is not just for monitoring, you can pause or stop the print also. If you are farther away from your printer and something bad happens, for example spaghetti, yes, this printer can detect this, then you will get the notification on your phone. It's not just letting you know what is going on, you can also stop or resume the print, even if you are really far away from your printer. Now, after a little bit of time, this print is ready and it turned out exactly as expected. Support material snapped off even before I had chance to get this off from the boil plate. By the way, if you are thinking why this small print took so much time, well obviously because it used 4 different filaments. The printer printed still really really fast, but the changing of the filament 3 to 4 times per layer, well that's why the print took 4 and half hours. Just for example, this print with single color took me also 4 and half hours to print. By the way, this is 3 layers thick and infill 15%. This is huge model and it took basically the same amount of time than this one. By the way, after printing a bit with this printer, I got the information that I'm not even printing at the full speed. There are 4 modes. Silent. Obviously the slowest, but the printer will be quiet. Standard. This one I have only used so far. And then there is Sport and Ludic Ludricos. A bit hard to say this word because I have an accent, but the last one is the fastest. So this is what I did now. I choose one test print. Estimated time for this print is 3 hours and 37 minutes, with standard mode. I changed this to Ludricos and the estimated time now is exactly 2 hours. After removing all supports, this print turned out really nice. There are two imperfections. The first is over here. The surface is a bit rough and second, this overhang is not perfect. But yeah, this model took me two hours to print and for this time it's insanely nice print. By the way, this is USB stick holder and the design itself is really great and cool. This model will stay on my table. Wonderful. Enough of PLA, let's get serious. This printer I have is not actually Pambulab X1, this is X1 Carbon. Everything I have reviewed so far is almost the same for X1 and X1 Carbon. Stuff I'm going to do now is only for X1 Carbon. Well yeah, I am going to print carbon fiber nylon. So I installed the spool of carbon fiber nylon to my AMS and started the print. By the way, meanwhile the print is printing, let's take a bit closer look to the AMS. Well this one unit can hold 4 filaments at the same time. You can use third party filaments, but there can be a situation where some brand filaments spools are too big and they don't fit inside. I'm mainly using eSun filaments and those spools fit in there perfectly. But if you are going to use Pambulab own filaments, then the AMS can recognize the filament by itself and you don't have to manually add this to the printer. Also, at the really beginning I said that this printer can print 16 different colors at the same time. Well yeah, but sadly I cannot show you this because I have only one AMS unit. The case with this, you can buy more AMSs and connect them in series. Maximum 4 AMS can be connected together and then you can print up to 16 different colors at the same time. If you want to print or storage, for example nylon, in this AMS unit you can do this with any problems because this lead is completely airtight. And to keep inside dry, there are those moisture sucking packs that are included with the printer. 
My carbon bench is ready. Well, this is not perfect. Here are those blobs. I also printed this Faro skeleton and it's a bit better. Those two prints look like trash because my filament was wet and nothing else. I took the brand new spool of carbon fiber nylon and printed those two models again. And it's... come on. This is what those models should look like. Absolutely excellent. I also printed gears for my last video and those uh, one uh, and those ones turned out really nice. I always say that use raft when you 3D printing gears. Smart, but I didn't with this printer because the automatic bed leveling working so well and the first layer was just excellent. There didn't happen any elephant foot. The best carbon fiber prints I have made so far are those spoiler legs. Really nice and strong prints. Material that I haven't tested yet is ABS. ABS is not the easiest material to print, especially if the parts are big. So I printed one waste, with waste mode. So this model will be only one layer thick, so if this print succeeds without any warping or layer separation, then I can comfortably say that this print can print ABS without any problems. And this is exactly what happened. This model turned out excellent and there is not even a smallest imperfection. So this printer can print ABS without any problems. But okay, what I like and what I don't like about this printer. Let's start what I like first. One thing that I haven't mentioned yet is this printer look. This is the best looking printer I have ever seen. Also this touchscreen is 720p and it's so responsive, it feels like smartphone. Obviously I like this printer's speed and print quality. The print volume is also really fine. This is not insanely big but it's pretty fine size, at least for me. This is really rare when I print some bars that don't fit on this size build plate. What I really like about this printer is that the team that engineered and built this printer has done revolutionary work in 3D printing world and I'm pretty sure that this affects the whole 3D printing market hugely. In this world nothing is perfect, including this printer. As we have seen, this printer is really outstanding of the new features and excellent printing speed and quality. But also here is some things that pretty much annoyed me. The worst thing, this printer is loud and I don't mean little bit noisy, it's loud. <laughs> The faster the printer is printing, the louder it gets. Even my cats cannot peacefully sleep when I turn this printer on. But you might think there is silent mode, why I don't use that? Well, I'm using this sometime. But for sure, this is less louder, but it's not silent. The second thing that I don't like is the light and door. Just saying this isn't affecting 3D printing experience at all and it will not be a problem for most of the people. The light inside isn't bright enough. For me, when I was recording this printer, it was a problem. I had to use an extra light source because my camera ISO went to maximum. Also the glass door has a black tone. This looks nice for sure, but in the daylight or your room light has turned on, you don't see inside this printer at all. But there is one really important thing that you have to keep in mind. I recorded this video in June 2022. At this moment, this printer isn't publicly available. Everything is still under development and when this printer hit the market, there might be a lot of things different from what I just showed you. Even on the really last day when I was editing this video, I got information that AMS unit was redesigned. Anyway, when this printer will be available for everyone and at what price? Well, I don't know. I asked them that, but they were not sure about this either. But I think and hope that in the future you can get this printer for around $2000. This is not fact, this is just only from my brain. This wild idea came from their just ended Kickstarter campaign. And if we take a look at the packer's price, well, that's where I made up this $2000 for one printer in the future. But this is only what I quest and hope. Anyway, if the time is there that you can buy this printer from the shop, should you do it? Well, if you are into 3D printing and after buying this printer you have enough money to buy food or electricity if you live in Europe, then yes, because this is something different and anything on the market right now won't come even close to this printer, especially at this price point. I hope you did enjoy this video. Making this video took me way more time than usually and it was really challenging. So see you guys next time. For now, bye bye.